Hello guys, welcome back to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology and we are starting with the Microbiology lecture series and this is the first lecture of Microbiology series and in this lecture we are going to talk about the bacterial structure and function. So we'll be talking about all the different components of bacterial cell uh, including its uh, cell wall as well as uh, the extra cyto cytoplasmic structures like fimbri, pili and all these things. So stay tuned and watch the lecture thoroughly. Now, first of all, uh, let's start to talk about the characteristics of a living cell. Okay, so characteristics of a living cell uh, can be like stated like all living things are made up of cells that share some common characteristics. So you can think about either a living uh, thing can be composed of a single cell or it can be composed of multiple cells. So we call it single or multicellular organism. Now the basic shape uh, in this case will be spherical, cubical, cylindrical. An internal content of a cell composed of cytoplasm surrounded by a membrane and for eukaryotic cells there are organelles membrane bound structures which has a dedicated role to play inside a cell in prokaryotes we don't have those organelles because uh, in prokaryotes there is no particular uh, fragmentation inside the cell that that will do some specific job so it's only just genetic material and cytoplasm and outside cell membrane but the chromosome or DNA acts as a genetic material and also inside ribosomes are there as well as the metabolic capabilities obviously are involved so based on all this cellular properties we can divide the cells into eukaryotes and prokaryotes eukaryotic cells are known as little updated versions which carry uh, extra units extra structures inside extra organelles inside while prokaryotic cells are primitive they are earlier uh, components they are not updated enough okay so here we want to talk about the prokaryotic cell we'll be seeing all the prokaryotic cell types their functions okay so the eukaryotic cells example are animals, plants, fungi and protists that contain membrane bound organelle uh, and that compartmentalize the cytoplasm or perform specific function and they also contain double membrane bound nucleus a specifically designed uh, structure inside of which the genetic material of that organism that is the DNA or in, in, in much complex version chromosome stays while in prokaryotic cells like bacteria or archaea no nucleus is found no membrane bound organelle are found you can clearly see the difference between the cell structure of prokaryote as well as eukaryote in this picture where you can see in prokaryotes only genetic material floating in the cytosol covered by cell membrane sometimes they also carry cell wall covering outside while in eukaryotes uh, we have nucleus inside of which the genetic material is present we have organelles like mitochondria Golgi bodies uh, you know new and and also chloroplasts lysosomes so this this structures mitochondria chloroplast they are unique to eukaryotic cells only eukaryotic cells may or may not have cell wall if eukaryotic cells have cell wall those are generally the plant cells animal eukaryotic cells do not have cell wall now if we start with the characteristics of life which is a pretty predominant we already know that from our plus two level but still reproduction genome composed of DNA packed into chromosomes and that actually produce offspring sexually or asexually reproduction is a one of a prime characteristics of life so as the growth and development metabolism that is chemical and physical life processes inside the cell movement or motility like a cell will move from its one location to the other the motility can be like uh, in, in terms of finding their food or in terms of occupying a new niche or for survival now the motility depends upon signaling which can come internally or can originate externally cell support protection storage mechanisms like cell wall vacuoles granules and inclusions are there and also transport of nutrients and wastes in and out of the cell that's another very important composition important characteristics of life because the cell needs to have a raw material for producing food they need to have raw material for utilizing them to produce energy and when they produce excess material waste material they need to be cleared out so all these things are also present and all of these properties are most important properties of life 
Now, if we think about an overview of structural overview of a cell, if you look at this is the bacterial structure overview, you can see that uh, this bacterial cell has a DNA inside, a genetic material inside, in it's floating in the cytosol. And if you look a cross section view, it looks something like this, where surrounding of this nucleus there is cytosol actually filled with uh, mostly water and there are other protein components present inside and there are also different protein components chemical components are there and also small protein uh, build uh, structures are there to hold the cytoplasm structure very tightly and this this structures that is out there is formed uh, by actin filaments so actin monomers actin are protein monomers which combine with one another to form this what is known as a cytoskeleton elements that hold the shape and structure of the cell by connecting this cytoplasmic components and other components of the cell with its membrane and in turn membrane is protecting the whole cell from a uh, damage from outside and maybe there are some cytosolic extinction uh, I mean extensions the extensions are known as fimbri pili as you can see this is pili these are fimbri and flagella all are the components which are ex extensions of the cytosolic compo components for example flagella is very big one made up with uh, flagellin uh, protein in case of bacteria on the other hand this this uh, pili and fimbri they are also made up with cytoskeleton elements which has different role in terms of bacteria to be adhered to the surface of host cell uh, to initiate the process of infection and causing the colonization okay so they became a part of the the outermost coating surrounding the cell membrane which is also known as a slime layer or, or uh, which is like a glycocalyx layer mostly made up with uh, carbohydrate moieties attached with the uh, membrane surface external structures there are two types of external structures that we generally found uh, in in inside i mean outside the cell one are appendages and second is glycocalyx as i mentioned glycocalyx is nothing but a surface coating which is simply built with the help of some carbohydrate moieties that are fused with all the protein and lipid components of the cell membrane while appendages are two different type they generally help in either motility or attachment or as a channels motility like flagella and axial filaments which is also known as periplasmic flagella now both flagella and periplasmic flagella or axial filaments help the bacterial cells to uh, to to propagate to move from one place to the other while uh, others like fimbri and pili helps in the attachment of the cell uh, with the surface of a host cell or host tissue and this attachment or adherence is is the very first step of the the process of cellular interaction bacterial cell interaction with the host and that's the very first step of host pathogen interaction so let's start talking about this flagella flagella has a very complex structure compared uh, with this prokaryotic or primitive cell even though we call it primitive or prokaryotes but flagella structure is so much complex it's remarkable how the bacterial cell evolved to have such a complex structure so it's known as a molecular turbine so it is composed of three comp compartments filament part hook and a basal body the filament is a long thin helical structure composed of protein as you can see this is the filament region okay this is composed of protein components known as flagellin protein now there is a hook hook it has a carved sheath this is the hook which is a carved sheath like structure which is kind of contractile in case of bacteriophage that we have talked about earlier but in this case the sheath also protects uh, that filament because the filament is present inside of that sheet carving the third thing is basal body so basal body is a structure which is present uh, embedded in the membrane of bacterial cell and also cell and uh, cell wall component structures the embedding structure is known as the basal body so the basal body contains the ring to the bottom most region and the rod in the middle so with both the leaflet both the side of the cell membrane there is a ring in the outermost leaflet a ring is a smaller diameter for the innermost leaflet the ring 
is of higher diameter but these two rings are connected with a rod structure inside so that makes two different distinct component of uh, the flagella a stator and a rotor so this is uh, acting as a stator and the rotor is outside so the stator remains inside anchoring the flagella structure to the cell membrane of the bacteria while the rotor unit com continues to rotate uh, and as it continues to rotate uh, it generates a propelling movement that helps the bacteria to move forward towards a particular direction okay it helps to move toward a specific direction and this movement depends on a chemical signaling process and that chemical signaling process uh, is known as the chemotaxis so chemotaxis is uh, is a process with which uh, bacteria generally move towards a particular uh, direction of a chemical component secretion so that is uh, the flagella and motility so this flagella with the help of this rotor unit which is present outside the flagella structure that we can see from outside can rotate 360 degrees and that is a beauty of this propelling effect because it functions in motility of the cell through the environment as you can see in this picture that once this rotor unit continues to rotate that allows the movement of uh, the bacteria towards a uh, direction so in which direction obviously the flagella is present opposite to the to the head of the bacteria in this case this act as a head this act as a tail of a bacterial cell now as the tail start rotating 360 degree uh, the bacterial cell will propel and will proceed towards the head direction as well as so so it, a bacteria can have one flagella it may have more than one flagella now this flagella can be present throughout of its uh, cell throughout of its uh, of its cell membrane it can be uh, anchored to different parts of the cell membrane so that means the flagella can be rearranged depending upon their necessity okay so in this picture you can see in the bottom most picture here in the left hand side we can see all the flagella is uh, now arranged to one pole of the bacterial cell so that they can be coiled and all the flagella can move to generate a much bigger propelling force thus helping the bacteria to move forward faster in galloping fashion while uh, if the bacteria needs to float in one particular region in one particular location in the in the aquatic environment in that occasion uh, the flagellal distribution took place throughout the cell and as a result of which they simply propel themselves in their respective position allowing the bacteria to hover and stay one particular place only so this helps the bacteria to stay or to move at a particular direction the flagellal arrangement as we saw in this picture are different and this flagellar arrangement changes with time so uh, based on the arrangement of this flagella we can divide the bacteria into different types so like monotrichus a single flagella at one end lophotrichus small bunches emerging from the same site okay so monotrichus as you can see this is the monotrichus lophotrichus is when all the flagella is moving out from one pole of the cell which we saw here in the earlier picture as well this one amphitrichus flagella at both the ends this is amphitrichus in this picture this one amphitrichus because amphi means the flagella should come out from both the poles of the bacterial cell and peritrichus the flagella dispersed over the surface of the cells throughout the surface of the cells that is peritrichus so so this one was peritrichus this one was monotrichus uh, i mean in, in this this will be lophotrichus because many flagella all together and this is monotrichus okay so mono and lopho both uh, is a situation where the flagella is present at one pole of the bacterial cell only but monotrichus is when there is only one flagella unit and lophotrichus is where small bunches of flagella together flagella responses now the flagella response can help the bacteria to move towards the direction of a chemical secretion via the chemotaxis mechanism now that that will allow the the uh, bacteria to move now the bacterial movement can be straight but generally the bacterial movement always is in zigzag line which is unpredictable as you can see in this picture below so you can see that either a bacteria can hover at one particular position when the flagella is equally distributed 
okay which is known as peritrichous situation but in a situation where the bacteria to to progress forward they need to have the flagellar arrangement to one pole so the chemical stimuli is required which is known as a chemotaxis process uh, that can be of either positive and negative stimuli now the last light stimuli is known as phototaxis and the chemical stimuli is known as the chemotaxis now the signal sets flagella into motion either clockwise or counter clockwise motion if the motion is counter clockwise that results in smooth linear direction if the motion is clockwise that results in tumbling motion so either as i said a straight motion or a tumbling motion zigzag motion like this so it's not even zigzag because zigzag means mm, changing direction alternatively that's not the case tumbling means you cannot predict the movement here so if it's counter clockwise then in that case so so you can imagine this is counter clockwise counter clockwise means uh in this case it is a smooth unidirectional or linear motion and clockwise means tumbling motion okay so remember that and there are sometimes periplasmic flagella to be present because we know flagella is an extension of the cytoplasm and that is actually originated from inside of the cell although it's originated from inside but the flagella's most of the component is present outside of the cell so this is kind of connected to the cell membrane and ultimately connected to the cell cell cytosol from inside but there are flagella that is present uh, near to be connected uh you can see that internally so we call them internal flagella enclosed in the space between outer sheath and the cell wall peptidoglycan so we know that two different types of bacteria are generally found one with a very thick peptidoglycan layer another one with a very thin peptidoglycan layer but no matter what situation it is that uh outer sheath of this flagella can be present in trapped with this peptidoglycan layer so we call them internal flagella it produce cellular motility by contracting and imparting twisting or flexing motion and that can help in uh, like generating a, a a corkscrew like like twisting motion and that helps the movement and spiral movement of the organism where the flagella is present and uh, there are example found in few occasions the flagella to be having like this we call it periplasmic flagella you can see in this picture this is a periplasmic flagella that we can clearly see okay you can see this is the cell membrane and this is the outer sheath and uh, this is the periplasmic flagella that is kind of surrounding the whole cell if you look at a cross section it so looks something like this otherwise it's something like there is a big rod and a rope is tied across that rod in such a way uh that in every single time if you do a cross section you are going to see some portions between the cell membrane as well as the outer sheath layer now apart from flagella the other cytosolic extensions are pili and fimbri we know flagella helps the cell to move it helps in the motility and it's mostly composed of the protein flagellin fimbri is also fine proteinaceous hair like bristles emerging from the cell surface which you can clearly see in this fluorescent uh, diagram uh, of of microscopic image you can see that this are the bacteria and these are uh, the, this 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 fimbri that is going out and sticking out from uh, surrounding uh, this this bacterial cell all the time okay it function in addition to other cells and surfaces so this fimbri only is helpful uh, for the bacteria to be adhered uh, to the surface of the host cells and this adherence help this fimbri to stick to the host cell and uh, and start colonization process quite fast and quite well that's the the idea about fimbri similarly there is another structure called pili this is a rigid a tubular structure made out of another protein known as pilin found only in gram negative bacteria function to join bacterial cells for particular dna transfer called conjugation now think about it all these structures are extra cytoplasmic structure so the structure is an an protrusion out of the cell 
but they have different roles to play like flagella has a role for a propelling movement of a bacterial cell while fimbri's job is to attach and adhere of the adherence of the bacterial cell surface with uh, any inanimate structure where they need to colonize and form biofilm like structures or to adhere to the surface of the host cell so that they can initiate the colonization but on the other hand pili which is only found in gram negative bacteria has a different role and a role of genetic component transfer between their the cells of their same generation which is also known as horizontal gene transfer ace hgt this horizontal gene transfer is is a process with which uh, the bacteria can share genetic component with themselves with the member of the same generation and that is really a uh, helpful in terms of sharing a very important genetic component in terms of sharing the the genetic material between themselves and that helps them to initiate and and get uh, important properties like antibiotic resistance properties another talking about the layers on the surface of the bacterial cell another such layer is glycocalyx glycocalyx layer is just like a slime layer on the surface of the bacterial cell it's not like any protein component protruding out it's a coating of molecule external to the cell wall made up of only sugars and or some proteins but mostly this component is made up with sugar component and there are two types of glycocalyx that are found either a slime layer or a capsule layer both of them are filled with this sugar moieties attached with proteins attached with the fatty acids so slime layer is loosely organized structure and attached while capsule is highly organized and tightly attached structure but the structural components are kind of equal between the slime layer and the capsule now the component of slime layer and capsule help this bacteria to escape the host defenses because the host produces antibody to bind with specific antigenic determinant which are present on the surface of the bacterial cell now this glycocalyx like slime layer or, or capsule is covering all the antigenic determinants in the surface that's going to prevent uh, the antibody to properly bind and thus uh, it it prevents the killing of this bacterial cell by the host immune defenses on the other hand this glycocalyx layer also help this bacteria to properly interact and adhere to the again surface of a uh, certain inanimate component uh, as well as some other components uh, in the host cell surface as well now as i mentioned two functions but you can say protect the cell from dehydration and nutrient loss this is another important feature inhibit killing by white blood cells by phagocytosis Com so it's contributing to pathogenicity right and the attachment so this glycocalyx layer produces so many carbohydrate moieties on the surface which is very good in terms of creating a long lasting very tight and and very strong interactions between the inanimate component between the environmental components of uh, the bacteria thus forming biofilms and we know biofilms are so much complex in terms of uh, its adhesiveness that we cannot even scrap out the bacterial cells out of the biofilm quite easily that's why you have the biofilms in your in your tooth we we simply cannot scrap it out that easily so what is this biofilm biofilm on a catheter you think about this this is a biofilm on a catheter but you know in other examples uh, we have biofilm in our tooth we have biofilms in a, in any place where there is a constant movement of liquid containing nutrients so you can see this is the catheter surface and we can clearly see the catheter surface this is the catheter surface the black colored and this is the biofilm made up with bacterial composition and fungal cells as well so some of them are fungal cells and this is a uh, staphylococcus cells so staphylococcus and fungi both remain together uh, in a positive reinforced positive interactions between them on the surface of that catheter surface so this is just an example of how this bacterial cells like staphylococcus properly adhere to the surface of catheter surface and similarly the same thing for other bacteria that generally forms biofilm in our tooth and how they do this because they have those carbohydrate moieties and with the help of this carbohydrate structure it's like a glue with which they can easily adhere and attach to the surface of our tooth 
the cell envelope now till this point we've been talking about all those extracellular components right we have been talking about uh, those glycocalyx layer the flagella fimbri pili all this now there is there can be also cell envelope okay this is another extracellular component external covering outside the cytoplasm composed of two basic layers though cell wall and cell membrane and we know both of them are most important in terms of providing safety and shape and structure to a cell so generally not all the microbes have a cell wall but all the microbes definitely have cell membrane because they need to have cell membrane uh, to maintain the cell as a separate system as a closed system they maintain cell integrity and there are two different groups of bacteria demonstrated by the gram stain which actually kinds of help us to find out the presence of thick or thin cell wall now those with very thick cell wall is known as gram positive bacteria because it's composed of primarily of peptidoglycan as well as cell membrane while the other one with very thin uh, cell wall known as gram negative bacteria they were very very thin peptidoglycan cell wall layer although they have a third and an extra uh, layer of cell membrane outside we call them gram negative bacteria so this is the onset of understanding gram positive and gram negative bacteria although the nomenclature is given based on uh, how they respond in terms of gram staining which is in turn is named after the the name of the scientist who who actually worked with the staining process and principle so gram positive they have a thick peptidoglycan cell wall they don't have any third cell membrane outside actually not third it's a second layer of cell membrane outside while gram negative bacteria they have an extra layer of cell membrane outer most region but they don't have very thick peptidoglycan layer they have a very thin peptidoglycan layer and you know in bacterial uh, cell structure we don't focus mostly on cell membrane and other cellular components like cytosol because this is very similar with that of the eukaryotic cell the major difference was in the cell wall and the difference is with uh, the outer cellular component like extra cellular components like glycocalyx layer the capsules uh the slime layers okay so we have talked about that so the cell membrane uh is also made up with phospholipid bilayer with a mosaic pattern of protein embedding uh like a mosaic pattern and this cell membrane functions in providing site for energy reactions nutrient processing and synthesis it is also acting as a passage of nutrients into the cell and discharging wastes out of the cell and the cell membrane is selectively permeable so it will allow only certain molecules to move in and out now if you think about the inside of the bacterial cell we only need to talk about two things one is the cell cytoplasm and the second one is the genetic component of the cell that is bacterial chromosome you know the cell cytoplasm is a dense a dense solution of sugars amino acids and salts that are present and it is composed of mostly water 70 to 80% of the water it serves as a solvent for materials used in the cell functions like the proteins like amino acids sugars and salts so this this act as a as a medium as a solvent for all those components now the last thing nucleoids like chromosomes plasmids and also ultimately the bacterial chromosome the bacterial chromosome can be single circular double stranded dna molecule that contain all the genetic information required for the bacterial cells to survive that is the bacterial chromosome apart from bacterial chromosome bacteria may have plasmids which are very small circular double stranded dna which is capable of self replication means autonomously replicating getting themselves so not essential for bacterial growth and metabolism but they can provide the bacteria extra benefits or extra properties like antibiotic resistance feature like utilizing certain or like helping to produce certain enzymes to utilize a nutrient the bacteria generally is unable to utilize so those are the roles of plasmids and bacteria generally utilize the fusion for its division purpose as well as the uh, the process of you know conjugation between themselves 
So in all the occasions, plasmids can also be transferred from one bacteria to the other. And that acts as a gateway of conveying the message and sharing important information like the antibiotic resistance feature from one bacteria to the other bacteria. And these plasmids are blessing for us as a molecular biologists during genetic engineering to readily manipulate and transfer from cell to cell. Other than that, there are bacterial ribosome which are little different in structure and uh, its function compared to the eukaryotic ribosome. While eukaryotic ribosome is known as 80S ribosome, the prokaryotic ribosome is known as 70S two components known as 130S, the large subunit, and the other one is 150S, the large subunit, another one is 30S, the smaller subunit. Now, this ribosome involved in the protein synthesis, and you know, bacteria continue its protein synthesis inside the cytoplasm because they have the ribosomes in the inside the cytoplasm always. And they made 60% of ribosomal RNA and made up with 40% of soul proteins. Okay, prokaryotic are different in terms of ribosomal structure with that of the eukaryotes, and the size of the ribosome is also little different. And uh, this ribosome is found in every single cell of prokaryotes because it is so essential that it's required to produce proteins that helps the bacteria to survive. The other bacterial internal structures, uh, like inclusions and granules. Like intracellular storage bodies, they can be vary in size, number, and content. Like bacterial cells can use them when environmental resources are depleted. So this is also there, but it's also very, very rare. Not like the plants. Because in case of plants, the vacuole is always present. And the vacuole's volume and size is huge, always. Because it stores a lot of secondary metabolites and other metabolic components inside the vacuoles to use them in future. While in bacteria, it's not the case like vacuoles, but still they have vacuole-like intracellular storage bodies, uh, which are varying in size number. But they can store uh, other components inside uh, that can be used by that same bacteria while the environmental conditions are turning harsh. The other internal structure of bacteria which is really important is cytoskeleton, which I mentioned earlier as well. Cytoskeleton like actin filaments, which holds the cell membrane and connects it with the rest of the cellular components inside. And it actually literally provides a skeleton to the cell so that the cell has its own shape. Otherwise, the cell should collapse and should not have any particular shape. So many bacteria possesses an internal network of protein polymers. They are closely associated with one another. Particularly in case of this, this bacterial cell, there are microfilaments or actin filaments. Okay friends, so that's all about the bacterial structure and function. See you in the next lecture of microbiology. So if you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that. Bye.